Why? Why do you think they use the letter X so much in these names? The, the letter X is not, a, you know, a popular letter. I mean, uh, it's not a frequently appearing letter, and yet it appears almost all the time in these companies. And somebody yelled out the answer, and we will see. We will see. Kill the lights. We put on the slide check. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I first became interested in this subject of uh, subliminal advertising, when I looked at my vitamin label, <laughs> stamina X vitamins, I just, you know, I took the label and I, uh, I threw it down and it folded like that. I said, oh, that must just be a coincidence, you know, that the letters of the name of the label spell out the word sex. You know? I said, ah, it's just a coincidence. So I, I started looking at other products, and uh, here's an advertisement for Stridex, which appeared in many women's magazines. And if you fold this, Stridex says S E X. Okay. Ah, could be just a coincidence, right? You know, just a coincidence. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Notice the word EXP here. E X, okay? E X. Okay. Why do they name it EXP? You've got to be kidding if you think that there's some other significance here than S E X. The reason they use the letter X over and over in advertising, according to Wilson Bryan Key, is because it suggests to the unconscious mind the word sex. Can we look at the next one? That's backwards, but you don't have to turn it around to see the X. Look at this number, 280ZX. Where does that number come from? Look at this. You see what this is? If you had turned it around, it looks like an S. SX, okay? They're just leaving out one letter. Hey, that's not funny. I mean, these people are putting something over on us, and they're selling a lot of uh, expensive merchandise with this. It's no accident that that happened. Can we take a look at the next one? Yeah, right, X11. Like, that has some significance. They just want to get the X in there. The X, the ubiquitous X. It gives you goosebumps. <laughs> now, that helps not the fact that you don't consciously see this. Can we take a look at the next one? Now, this is an ad for Seagram's Extra Dry, believe it or not, which features very prominently this bottle of these uh, models, the woman is very scantily clad, and uh, <laughs> notice the uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if that's significant or not. No, the thing to notice here is this label. Look at the, look at the product. This is a product for Seagram's, right? But notice how the label has been set up with the uh, with the name Seagram's with the capital S right above the word extra with the capital E. If we can take a look at the next slide, we'll see that this label juxtaposes the S with the E and X of extra so that these letters are very close. Look at that. You think that's an accent that they have been placed there? And it's like an old-fashioned label, too. It's like they're saying, yeah, this is like from the 1800s. I mean, we wouldn't even be thinking in these days about Sex, you know, we're not even thinking about that. <laughs> now, notice this. Okay, planters, okay, they're a reputable company. They wouldn't do anything shady, would they? They're counting on the fact that you don't think they will. Now, unconsciously, psychologists tell us, we can read forward and backwards as well as up and down. Notice the placement of the S here in unsalted. Right above, if we can take a look at the next slide. Right above the E in mixed, and if you go backwards like this, you get this S E X. That's no accident. They think long and hard about these labels and about the placement of the letters on these labels because they're counting on that to have some kind of an effect on you. It is no coincidence that these letters have been placed in this order on this label. Let's take a look at the next slide. Now this ad for Secret of Deodorant appeared in Glamour and other women's magazines. And it depicts
takes this woman in a very revealing dress and the product, okay, over here, and all these words of copy that nobody ever reads, first of nobody ever reads that. If this ad has to work, it has to work within four seconds. That's the amount of time that they have to communicate something. Nobody's going to read this. Something else is happening in this ad that's going to sell this product. What's going to happen? What's going on here? Notice there's a guy in the background holding up a newspaper, right? A guy in the background holding up a newspaper. Well, let's take a closer look at that guy. Can we focus in on him? Look at that guy. Look at, that. Look at what it says in the newspaper. S-E-X. -S. Again, so you don't miss it. S-E-X. What do you think he's got on his mind? <laughs> Sex, of course. Now, if you can go back and take a look at that full slide, just go back one. Now, it doesn't immediately jump out at you that he has sex on his mind, but the unconscious, within four seconds, will pick up this message. There it is. It says it. He's got it on his expression, and it's very obvious what's going on here. Once you see it, again, they're counting on the fact that you won't see it, even though it's right in front of your eyes. Why? Because we repress things that are sexual. We also repress things that deal with religion and death. The unconscious never forgets so. Okay, we'll take a look at the next couple of slides. This ad, which was in the New York Times magazine for a resort known as Elbow Beach, is also doing something with this picture because the picture freezes time, has a before and an after, and tells a story. It freezes time in now, but it has a little... Who are these people? What is their relationship? Look at them. Look what it says. And again, most people never read this. It says the good life is always in season at Elbow Beach, right? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Look at those people. Let's take a closer look at those people. Look right at them, and then look <laughs> right down here. <laughs> F I N. Yeah. Yeah. Why did they put the word over? They could have said anything there. They could have said anything. Is it an accident? that the word always is right under them, next to the word in, so that S-I-N appears below them. Sin. Does that suggest anything to you about who these people are? What they're doing there, and what they're going to do there. <laughs> okay, that's maybe, if you can go back, why the good life is always in season. No, we'll be Okay, we can go to the next, please, Jeff. Now, you know that advertising... This is an ad for some kind of uh, whiskey, right? Canadian Miss. And it shows you bottles floating over this lake. And you, know, and then, you know they could have said anything in the copy, right? The copy is the words. They could have said anything, right? And they get paid a lot to say what they say, right? Hey, look, they get paid a lot. All they, all they come up with is four words. One of the words is the name of the, you know, I mean, part of the name of the product. They could have said anything, but what did they say? What did they say? Is it any accident that they said, Canada at its best? Can we take a look at the next slide? So that the T is right here. T-Y-T-S. Can we go back to one? Tits. It says right there. Share some. <laughs> That's no accident, ladies and gentlemen. They think these things up, they sweat over it, they copy it, they paste it out, and then they say, they say to the advertising people, they say to the executives at the Canadian Miss, here's our presentation, do you like it? And they, you know, they approve it or they don't approve it. But they don't tell them what they're doing. They just do it. Can we take a look at the next two slides, please? Now, in this advertisement for a woman's razor, you see the product floating over the woman's legs. And, you know, that's very distracting, so probably you don't, you, know, you don't read this stuff. Again, this advertisement has to work within four seconds. And how does it work? 
you know they think very long and hard about the names of their products. They sweat over these names. Literally. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars testing the names of their products. Can we look at the next one, please? You'll see that this product is named sort of a teardrop, doesn't it? But it's, it's, it's not, I don't know, just, what happens if that drop would fall down here? <laughs> and just connect. <laughs> the body, the so that it would say something completely different. Do you think that it's an accident that they left Okay, let's take a look at this for a minute. This is the carton for your butter. Now, how many of us use lamelace butter all the time? We never stop to look at the carton carefully. What's going on in this carton? It shows this nice Indian woman, and you know, she's there with another carton. So it's like a carton within a carton. But there's something going on here. And if you take this Lando Lake butter, Carton, and you just, if we can take a look at the next slide, fold it. This is what you get. <laughs> now, the unconscious folds things all the time and sees this kind of stuff all the time. Lando Lake's butter. Sweet cream. <laughs> all right, go to the next one. Thank you. Those simple words are a lot more going for images and words of a lot more going for them. And there are people out there making big bucks because they know about this. That's why I told you about it. So that you could know about it. You may think what they're doing is unethical. At this point, you may not even believe it. You may be saying, I don't believe it's happening. And a lot of people, when they first hear about this, they reject it. And they say, I can't believe it. It's just your dirty mind. Okay. But once you accept it, once you realize that what's being done, the subliminal, the unconscious, the connotations of words and images, you realize it's used by all writers and artists. Shakespeare uses it, the Beatles use it. Um, subliminal, something unconscious. It's a tool. That's the basic, that's the bottom line. It can be used for good, it can be used for bad. 